Hello! Welcome to Maths with Miss Reed. Today we are going to be doing all about the four operations. Now I'm sure you're familiar with all of them. We've got addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. Now all of these have slightly different names and we can do them all in slightly different ways. Today we are going to be looking at the most efficient ways of doing addition. Now, these ways will be different for all of you, but these ones are the ones that we use in school all the time and we find the easiest to use to help us when we're doing our learning. Efficient means it's quick and easy and we get to the answer in the most sensible way. So we're going to do our best to do some efficient addition today. My favourite method of doing addition is by doing column addition. This is by far the quickest and it's the method you should be using at home because it works from the smallest numbers. Oh, let's do this one. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To the biggest numbers. Let's try this. Now, the first rule when we're writing out an addition question in column addition format is to make sure we have done one thing that I've already forgotten. I need to put my addition symbol here. The reason we do that is so that we don't get confused and forget and do subtraction or something else silly instead. I'm going to show you how to do this one first. I'm sure you already worked it out and you're going to say, Miss Reed, this is too obvious and too easy. And then we're going to do this one together just so I can remind you of what we need to do when something a little bit trickier comes up. So when we're doing column addition, we look at the numbers on top and the numbers on the bottom. We layer them up. I need to make sure that I am adding the 5 to the 10. But I need to go in order of right to left. That way I can carry over any numbers that get bigger. So I know that 5 add 0 is going to equal 5 and I can carry and plop my 1 straight down here because there's nothing there for me to add to those 10s. So that is 10 and 5, 15. All done. Let's check out this one. I know that this is my hundreds, tens and ones and I need to start on the right hand side and add up first. So 8 add 1 is 9. I can write that straight in the bottom because it's the first one on there. Next I need to do 6 add 7. Some of you might be thinking, oh I can do that in my head in 2 seconds. Um, I'm personally a huge fan of double checking on my fingers. So I'm going to start with my 7 because it's a bigger number and add my 6. 7 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13. Now, I can't just put the 13 straight in there because there's something in this column already. I'm going to put a teeny tiny version of that over there. And I can put my 3 underneath my 10s. So that means I've got 3 10s and 100. But I said it was 13 because I was just adding my 10s column. Okay? So up here I've got my 5 and my 2, but I can't forget my teeny tiny 1 who's down here. So don't forget the teeny tiny 1, alright? So 5, add 2, I'm going to start with my 5, going to add my 2, 5, 6, 7, and add my teeny tiny 1 makes it 8. I like to draw right over that one, but I know some of you will cross it out and that's fine. So I know that 568 add 271 is 839. Now I can do this all the way up to here. I can do this even bigger. I can do 2379 add 1925 with ease because I know this method. I'm going to start by adding as I go. I've already forgotten the first thing I need to do though. I've got to make sure I've written my plus symbol there so that I don't forget and do a net subtraction by accident. 9 add 5. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 
7 add 2, add the teeny tiny 1, 7, 8, 9, 10. Make sure I've crossed out that one. Ugh. 3 add 9, add 1. Now it's probably easier for me to start on the 9 because it's the bigger number and count up that 3 and then add that 1. So 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There we go. 2, add 1, add 1. 2, add 1, add 1 is 4. So I've got 4,304 all together there. I know that that's that for certain. And I can double check my answers if I wanted to in another way. But I've got all of you at home to check for me. If you're getting stuck and you're worried about moving your columns or arranging your columns, use grid paper to write on. Or you can do this little trick just to help you make sure you've got them all in the right rows underneath each other. Layout is really important when it comes to working out your maths. It makes it nice and clear and easy for you to read. That is how, that is the most efficient method of doing addition and the one that we always use in school. If you are doing addition and you are stuck, use your column addition method. That's it from me. Goodbye.